Whether you've ever calibrated your Atomos monitor in the past or it's something that you're thinking of doing in the future, I'm going to take you through the process that you can go through to do that. Now, the old process has been fairly well documented um, by Atomos and others, um, including myself. I mean, way back in 2016, I was on Atomos's stand at IBC doing live demonstrations of, of using these LANC cables to calibrate their monitors using x rite probes. So this has been possible for a very long time. However, what's changed, and the reason why I'm doing this tutorial now, is Atmos has released the Shinobi 2. It is now infinitely easier to calibrate the Shinobi 2 than it has been in previous generations of Atomos's monitors. And the big reason for that is you no longer need this uh, expensive, sort of 40, 50 pounds uh, these cost, uh, USB to LANC, two and a half mil LANC connection that used to connect into the remote port on the Atomos monitors to calibrate them. You then needed to plug your uh, probe into a computer. So you had multiple elements involved. You had your monitor connected to your computer via this cable. You then had your probe connected to your computer so that the software could feed a test pattern to the monitor and then be read by the software. And then the software would do the work and then write that calibration back to the Atomos monitor using that LAN connection again. It was fairly uh, swift once you had everything in place, but you need a lot with you, not least a specific cable without which you cannot do that process. Number one on my list of reasons why I've just updated to the Shinobi 2 is that it comes with a USB-C port, and that is all you need to calibrate it using a Calibrite probe. Now, there's a few things that you do need to bear in mind. The first of which is that you do need to set the Shinobi 2 in its control menu. You need to change the control mode to calibration mode. That primes it so that it knows what to expect and what's about to happen to it. Now, like all calibration processes with any type of display, whether it's a calibrated reference monitor in an edit suite or post-production suite or an on-camera monitor like this, it's important that you allow that monitor to get up to operating temperature before you start the process of calibrating it. The reason is simple. During that warm-up time, which varies from monitor to monitor, it will be displaying its least accurate uh, color and tonal references at that point. Um, or not references, or whatever it's showing, will be the least accurate that that monitor is during that period. Once it's up to a consistent and stable operating temperature, at that point it is then dishing out whatever it's dishing out, whether that's calibrated, uncalibrated, accurate, or, or otherwise. It's only at that point that we want to then feed that display with our test pattern and then measure it, because if we do that before it's warmed up, we know we're not going to be getting the actual readings that we would be getting once it's at temperature, so it's a complete waste of time. To initiate the actual test pattern and begin that calibration process, come out of the control menu, go into the info menu, and just tap the calibration button. If the probe isn't plugged in and you tap confirm, it will give you an error. It'll say that it can't detect that there's a calibration device plugged in. Similarly, if you haven't allowed the monitor to get up to temperature yet, then it will also give you a process error. So it will say that the display cannot be calibrated because the LCD temperature is too low. So that's if it's below 50 degrees C. As ever with these things, these probes can slip and slide around. So I'd recommend that you have it on a level flat surface when you begin this process. Once you tap the calibration button, it will come up with a calibration config detected. So it will ask you to place a supported calibration probe at the center of the screen and ensure that all the required cables are securely connected. And then it will say, do you wish to initiate the calibration process now? If you hit confirm and then grab your probe and place it on the screen, you may miss the beginning of the test pattern. So I'd recommend that you place the probe in the middle of the screen. And there should be just enough space to the left of it to tap that confirm button, and then the process will start and you haven't missed it. It will then generate that test pattern. And in fact, this is the big change with the Shinobi 2 is that test pattern is built into the monitor itself. Whereas previously you had to run the software, which is where the laptop or, or the computer became involved in the process. 
Um, so the display itself will generate that test pattern. The probes plug directly in. It will read those um, uh, primary color references, which will help it plot the chromaticity references for where they should live versus what it's reading. Um, it'll then run through a, a very gentle um, tonal scale and the probe will read those and it will figure out any gamma corrections that need to take place. And once it has all that information, it will generate a calibration LUT. It will write that um, back into the hardware of the device so that next time it's turned on, it is calibrated and ready to eyeball and trust, which is the important thing about this process. When you're done, if you have an SD card in the monitor, it will give you the opportunity to save a calibration report to that SD card, which might be useful for you. You can then choose to write the calibration LUT to the hardware or back out of it and go back to where you were. It is actually still possible to calibrate these monitors with the old Atmos software. So you can, if you want, still run this through the Atmos calibration software on your Mac or PC uh, and continue to use the um, old method of doing this. Uh, that's still supported, it still exists. The only thing to bear in mind is you need to go into the control menu and change the control mode to off. That step is necessary if you're using the software and going through the computer. But it strikes me as you know the best part about this is that you don't need a computer uh, to be in between the chain and part of the process. Uh, it essentially negates all of that, this new technique that's supported on the Shinobi 2, where you can go directly over the USB-C in order to calibrate it, which I just think is great. It's a, a huge step forwards. And hopefully uh, there will be more and more people doing this and we won't have a situation where you know, uh, eight years after I was there at IBC on Atomos' stand showing people how to do this in person, um, hopefully in another eight years, uh, we won't still be having this conversation and people surprised to hear that you can do it. I'm hoping that this will massively increase the amount of uh, calibrated Atomos monitors out there um, and that everyone is taking advantage of this and um, using their Calibrite probes to create that consistency from being on set shooting, plugged into their camera, and then back in their edit suite and the footage that they're looking at on their calibrated monitors, all matching, all in harmony and making our lives much, much easier.